Today on Ag Etc, we're at High Plain Journal Soil U with Nick Voss talking about how important it is to keep everything in your soil in balance and what techniques their farm uses to keep their soil healthy. Then Daryl Peel from Oklahoma State talks about the future of feeding corn and alternative crops producers are using. Then see how one Colorado rancher takes what he's learned from continuing education and applies it to his successful heifer operation. A new store is bringing healthy fresh food to the food desert areas of Kansas City. And Chip Redman talks about inversion and how to avoid its negative effects when spraying herbicides. It's all coming up right now on Ag Etc. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. I think uh, fertilizer is one of the things that people need to look at. Um, I think everyone over, over fertilizes way more than they think. Uh, we've seen cutting of fertilizer rates, not seeing reduction in yields. Um, you know, less tillage equals more infiltration. You know, you're building soil aggregates. Um, we're seeing that on our own fields. In the, in the old dust bowl. And so, you know, when it rains, it pours. And when the wind blows, it really blows. So you never know what Mother Nature, the weather forecast doesn't work for our area. Um, we are on our own kind of most of the time on the weather. So it's, it's hard to make cover crops work because you don't know when it's going to rain. But when it rains, you need to jump on it and you need to get something established. That's the only way you can keep cover on the ground. It's the only way you keep it from blowing. And it's the only way you're going to feed the biology and not starve the microbes. So we're, we're, we're trying to be as opportunistic as we can using the harsh weather that we're faced with. But it is possible. It is working. We're not too dry to grow a cover crop. It does take extra planning and it puts someone out of his comfort zone. Because you gotta, you gotta do something that every land grant university in a thousand mile radius tells you is not working. So we gotta be, we gotta be against the flow, you know. Just like everything else, three, four, five years down the line, uh, they would probably figure out why it's working for us. But right now we're on our own, and uh, it's it's a system we believe in. It's a system I believe we need to do. Um, change I think is inevitable and it's coming. Um, we're using less water, we're using less fertilizer, and we're raising good yields. So why would the guy not jump on something that's going to make him money and save him money? I think yield is good. I think yield's important. Obviously, you don't want to make a loss, but I don't think everything should be yield-driven. We, we try and focus more on uh, balancing the ratios, trying to get everything in a balance, get the bricks up, get the sugar content up, which means the protein's going to go up. Um, you know, if you want good exudation, you're probably going to need to keep everything in balance. And in the end of the day, it's the exudation, the breathing of the plant that, that feeds the soil. You know, all the sugars that the plant produces in the day, it, it, it 
pushes back to the roots at night and uh, not everything but a good portion of it and that's what feeds the biology and in the end of the day the quicker you can get the biology to grow the quicker the biology will feed the plant. The multi-species is, is I think is the future um, just like humans animals like to eat several things they don't like to eat just one thing and when you put them in a, in a multi-species environment you can see that because you know two different sheep will go into a new paddock and, they, and none of them will eat the same thing. The one will eat radish first, the one will eat barley first. And so they all, they all know what their body needs, and it's the same way. And when you give them that option, they're going to eat what they need, they're going to eat what's healthy. When you only eat, when they only have that grass to eat, you know, that's when you start having mineral problems, you start having all kinds of gut problems because they're trying to uh, digest something that is hard to digest sometimes at the same time of the year. I think uh, sometimes the, the lab guys get carried away in numbers and they can't explain things. We're on the other side of the aisle where we see things happening, but we can't explain it. So, you know, getting, getting us together with some of the university people is nice because, you know, they got something else to work on that they don't necessarily get the feedback that they need sometimes. And I think there's enough people here that's already doing what we're doing, but we can't necessarily explain everything we're doing. I mentioned in my talk about Dr. Foster making something, you know, explaining to us why the daikon radish is working for us and that we didn't know that four years ago but we believed in it because we saw what it, was, what it was doing for our wheat well he explained to us why it's doing it so it's nice when you can connect the two sides of the aisle and, and figuring something out Kansas corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver for the car enthusiast E15 has higher octane for the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. The biggest thing that's changed in our uh, market situation, I think, right now, or at least the latest source of uncertainty, is this feed market situation. So we have a lot of questions this year. It's a very unusual year in terms of, uh, we don't even know how many acres of corn we have, let alone what the yield's gonna be. We know it's gonna be smaller crop than we thought, you know, as little as three months ago. There's a lot of uncertainty swirling around now. That plays back into feeder cattle markets in particular. And so that's gonna be an issue we have to watch going forward. In the Southern Plains, we, uh, I'm beginning to hear stories now that, that some of the feedlots are beginning to, to switch out from corn-based rations to either grain sorghum or wheat or some combination of those. Um, you know, we've had a fair amount of feed wheat sitting around for a couple of years in the Southern Plains. It's been hard to work through those supplies because corn has been really cheap. And so, uh, so we may finally be at a point where that's going to come in. That has a couple of implications, obviously, for these feedlots and, and managing their own cost of gain. But I think it also plays into our expectations for the corn market in that there are these other feed supplies that have been kind of lurking in the shadows that'll come out and probably help offset some of the concerns we have about a smaller corn crop and higher cost of gain at the feedlot level. <laughs> 
The main thing is that it is uncertain. Uh, it can have impacts. In fact, it is having impacts, but most of those are kind of what they are right now. Um, and so, but we really need to pay attention to this stuff because going forward, uh, it can get better, it can get worse, um, and, we, and we just don't know. So you really can't let those out of your mind at this point until we see some resolution. And there's so many of them. They're all over the world, really, in terms of the things that impact uh, beef markets. So North American situation, the Japanese situation, the China situation, uh, there's just a lot of those factors out there right now that we, we have to keep an eye on until we see what plays out here over the next um, months, maybe years, before we see them all resolved. Well, you know, again, I think these cattle markets, I know producers are never happy with price levels. We'd like to see more. We've struggled a little bit this summer, uh, particularly with feeder cattle markets. But all in all, when you look at the cyclical expansion that we've had the last five years, the first full-blown expansion in over 20 years, um, when you look at the increase in beef production that goes with that, I think these markets have held together relatively well. And, and again, we're, we're trying something different this time in terms of probably plateauing numbers rather than seeing a sharp peak followed by liquidation. We don't need to be liquidating. I don't think there's a lot of economic signals out there for producers to, to change what they're doing. And so maybe that's the key is just kind of uh, figure out what you need to be doing and march on with those, keeping an eye on some of these unknowns that are out there right now. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash join to learn more. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. Sometimes you have to get creative. For a Colorado rancher, that meant an investment in learning and then applying what he learned. With our continuing education of ranching for profit, we sit down at least quarterly and uh, figure out our gross margins, which really gives us the economic snapshot of, of uh, current enterprises and maybe future enterprises that we need to look at. We'll factor in a little bit of labor. Is it too much labor to have all cows? Or is it too much risk to have all breeding heifers? The two main economic players for the nobles are their cow-calf and heifer development enterprises. The latter branching out to serve other customers of their Angus Bull supplier in Montana. A lot of these heifers, when they come to us, so the, the ones for the Basin customers, will have had uh, Gene Max testing already performed on them, so they've already been through one sort while they were on the ranch. On the Colorado Plains, the development program begins with a customized backgrounding phase. If you want them turned out and roughed a little bit, we can do that. If you want them brought along in the grill yard, we can do that. And then we have a pretty good source of grass to graze in the summertime. You know, we're not just a feedlot, so it's, it's very real-world conditions for all these cattle. Working with the nutritionist and heifer owners, Noble draws up breeding plans from target weights to clean up bulls, even ways to gather data on open heifers at a Nebraska feed yard. We go ahead and uh, go through this entire protocol when these heifers are developed, and we'll identify the cattle that are bred, and the rest of them will go to Chapel Feedlot, where they get fed, all the carcass data is analyzed, and it really gives a, a producer a great snapshot of, of where their herd's at and where it's going. 
The program quickly gained momentum with Basin Angus Ranch customers. If you put all these cows together between the eight or 10 cow herds, it's about 6,000, 6,500 head of cows. And it's, it's really fun to bring all these genetics from Wyoming, Montana, Nebraska, Colorado, and we get them all here and they're very similar. So these cattle can go out to, to very different environments and perform very similarly. So it's a lot of fun to bring them here and get to see it all culminate in one spot. That lets the heifer partners focus on managing their cows and developing their own mix of enterprises. They don't have to mess around and, and feed heifers on a daily basis. They don't have to take three or four days to AI in the spring. All they need to do is just run their cows. They'll actually have some other cattle, their contemporaries from different herds to compare them against in Chapel Feedlot. And I think it really helps them to streamline their operations too. Imagine turning soybean oil, used cooking oils, and waste animal fats into fuel so amazing it drives U.S. jobs and our economy forward. Learn more about biodiesel at americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Join us for the 15th annual Fall Bull Sale at Gardner Angus Ranch, Monday, September 30th at 9 a.m., featuring approximately 450 registered bulls, 160 registered females, including 35 cows and 125 heifers, and 300 bred commercial females. These are elite herd sire prospects and rank in the top percentiles of the Angus breed for calving ease, growth, and end product merit. Catalog will be available at GardnerAngus.com. Register for online bidding at LiveAuction.tv. It's business as usual producing value-added seed stock that provides opportunities for profitability regardless of our customer's chosen marketing endpoint. See you in September at the ranch. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash join to learn more. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotary cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there was a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I wanted to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and take trees with a shovel anymore, but I, mean, I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. When you're able to bring a grocery store into an area that not only uh, increases the health of the, the residents in the surrounding areas, but also provides new development opportunities, suddenly that is seen as a place where people want to be and want to be located near. Being in Wyandotte County, being in a community that for a lot of time has been ranked as the most unhealthiest county, it's, it's good to have a grocery store that has a farmer market in there, has a market that's, that's driven by community people. Uh, so having that access to food is very important. We have about 18 areas in our county that are designated as food deserts where those residents, those 27,000 residents, can't really access that food. Uh, because the store is not close or because of transportation are barriers that make it difficult for them to get to uh, healthy food options. One of the reasons K-State got involved was we were able to do listening sessions with the community to see what kind of products they would like in this store that could be healthy and affordable. And so the Merck has been taking that information so that they could use it to actually stock products that this community would prefer. 
For uh, decades, literally decades, this area has been in a food desert, the downtown as well as the surrounding neighborhoods. So this is an amazing first step at actually providing uh, affordable and um, healthy food to quite a lot of residents and people who also work in the downtown area. A lot of people are using, you know, the public transportation, the bus, and, you know, you can only carry so many items on the bus and, and be able to breathe at the same time, especially if you're an older citizen. So I think it's wonderful. Somebody mentioned today that this is the first step, and it is. And as long as we remember that this is the first step and not the last step, it makes me more proud because my hope is that once we see what happens here, we can start doing it in the northeast area of KCK. We can start seeing it in the black communities and the communities that are underrepresented and, and poor because those communities also deserve it as well. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees or neighbors helping neighbors? Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident? Give me a call, we can discuss. 316-945-6733. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'll be glad to answer and work with you. Imagine turning soybean oil, used cooking oils, and waste animal fats into fuel so amazing it drives U.S. jobs and our economy forward. Learn more about biodiesel at americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hi, my name is Chip Redmond. I'm the Kansas Mesonet Manager at Kansas State University. Mesonet's 62 weather stations that record data real time across the state and also provide historical data as well. And we measure things like solar radiation and temperatures and humidity and wind speed and wind direction. Um, we talked today about wind speed and wind direction, its importance when spraying herbicides, as well as um, influences that occur with the wind, such as obstacles and tree lines, shading, topography and, and, and crop types as well and, and those influences are really important when the producer goes out to spray in their field because if they don't take measurements at the right place 
and at the right time sometimes, they don't have representative measurement for their application and therefore they could develop off-target drift issues. Uh, we also talked about inversions and how they play a role and how they're, they're a daily occurrence. We typically see them develop one to two hours before sunset, persist through the entire night, and then we see them mix out uh, one to two hours after sunrise. Those inversions are really critical because if they spray during an inversion, that concentration of spray is not going to mix vertically very well. Instead, we're gonna see it be suppressed and sit at the surface where that colder air is, and it's gonna to wanna to move down slope and down valley and we could see some potential off-target drift issues. We see the same thing with prescribed burning, where if we burn in the evenings, we don't get as good as smoke dispersal, and it wants to stick towards the ground more. The Mesonet provides several tools, uh, one of which is wind gust, wind speed, and you can find that under the fire page. You look at current wind speeds and wind gusts across the state on all our weather stations at real time, so you can make, you can at least get some guidance tools on where wind shifts are occurring, as well as our, our winds meeting criteria that you're interested in. We will see differences in the field level. That's why it's a guidance tool. You must take measurements at your field. This is not a replacement for it. And then we have an inversion tool as well that provides real-time five-minute data of current inversion status across the state. So you can look at local stations as well as more regional stations to get a good big picture of if there's an inversion in place. You can also look at the historical seven-day data there as well under the chart tab and see when inversions typically develop and when they typically dissipate so you can develop a kind of a mental model of what we're seeing in your, your local area for spraying. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except for when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulder sure hurt. I kept waiting, and it, it didn't get better, and so I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. He said, well, I have to do surgery. I, thought, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not going to work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. I'd gotten down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers.